Hello friends, my name is Andrew Donovan. I'm an email marketing specialist at Intrigue and the host of the Thanks for Subscribing podcast, where I get to sit down with entrepreneurs, marketers, and email geeks like myself to answer one core question. How do businesses effectively use email marketing to build relationships, nurture leads, and grow profits? Empowering leaders to strengthen communities is Intrigue's primary purpose. My hope is that these insightful conversations give you, the listener, the insight and tools necessary to be that community strengthening leader in your life in and outside of your career. Now let's get on to today's episode. So thanks again. And I, I want to start with, with three icebreaker questions. They've got nothing to do with, with email or marketing, or anything like that, running a business, nothing to do with that. Um, and then we'll jump into, you know, who you are, what you do, and we'll talk about all the fun stuff with email. Okay. Sounds good. So the, the first, the first question is, uh, what is your dream vacation spot? Uh, Tahiti, Fiji combo surf trip. Okay. A combo surf trip. Yeah. I can, I can take that, especially in January. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to do it. Can't wait to be able to do that. I'm super stoked. I was supposed to go to Fiji and exchange, and then there was a military coup. So I ended up going to Austria. So I hate just when like, military coups happen. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so yeah, I've just never had a chance to get over there, and I'd love, I'd just love it. If I could tack Hawaii into that, then that would just be the dream vacation. So cool. Um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? I'm boring. It's vanilla. Really? Yeah. And a big but, personality. I thought it would be something outrageous. And specifically, though, with like a chip witch, so sm- sandwiched between two chocolate chip cookies. I can't uh, I- ideally homemade and still warm. Specific but good. Like <laughs> um, you've just arrived at the zoo. What animal are you going to visit first? Penguins. Peng- okay, strong choice. Always classy, kind of fun, yeah. slipping and sliding. They, yeah, I like the winter. They are weird. Yeah. Penguins of Madagascar is probably one of my favorite cartoon movies ever. So yeah, penguins. They Love smell it. though. They smell. They really do smell. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And then alter- alternatively, it would be a rhinoceros because I think they're dinosaurs. That's fair. Yeah. yeah, I'm a polar bear guy, but uh, yeah. Oh, polar, polar bear. Like, yeah, that's can't cool. Go can't go wrong. Okay, now that we've got the creative juices flowing. <laughs> um, if you can give the audience a quick 411 on, on who you are and some insight into the company that you run, which is Intrigue. Yeah, for sure. Rob Murray, um, one of the co-founders of Intrigue with uh, Paul DeMarco. We're a digital marketing company that focuses on uh, generating leads, qualified leads for the home improvement and construction industry with kind of like a specialty and area of focus around landscape, HVAC, um, home builders. So that's, that's us. There's whatever, almost 30 of us. Uh, we've been on Canada's, one of Canada's top growing companies list four years in a row. Um, yeah, we're just trying to empower leaders to strength communities is the purpose of the company. Um, and the whole idea behind that is that, you know, we're trying to help entrepreneurs grow their companies and, and empower them to employ more folks and have more fun and, um, if we can do that on a large enough scale, we can have some pretty big impact in the communities we operate in. And um, yeah, so that's the idea that we're working towards. Our kind of goal is to get to supporting 500 entrepreneurs a year. And right now we're somewhere around 80. So we got some work to do. It's a, it's a lofty goal. I'm obviously mm-hmm. on board. Um, you know yeah. I'm here. So <laughs> <laughs> that pitch worked on me before. So right on. It's good. Yeah. You find it very well. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to share a quote with you and then I want to hear your take on it. Yeah, go okay. for it. Facebook is always changing. Google is always changing. TikTok is always going to be changing influencers. But email, that's the one consistent that has not changed. And you own your uh, audience in that world. Email is still hands down the most important channel for any business to have. And that's by Dave uh, Gerhardt, which is, who is the chief marketing officer at Privy. What is your take on that quote? Um, well, I mean, first of all, I totally agree with it. I think, um, you know, there, when it comes to marketing, there's things that you own, there's things that you rent, and there's things that you kind of earn um, when it comes to getting yourself out there. And if you if you go from a digital perspective, um, you know, your website's core, you own that. That is something that you have full control over, and it's on the, the freeway of the internet that people can stop by and check you out. Um, but then number two is your email list. It, um, it's the only thing... Uh, digitally that you can own outside of like having good video and imagery. Um, But the idea that you can reach out to folks whenever you need to, um, and they can open it up whenever they want to. um, It's really, really powerful. And then not to mention all the technology and behind being able to track not only success rates, but engagement with, you know, your list uh, and your audience. 
Um, you don't have to, you know, rent anything. Whereas Facebook, TikTok, all this stuff, you know, all that, all, whenever it's organic, they, they let you, they let you get successful on organic stuff until every, everybody's doing it and then they monetize. Uh, and then when they monetize, it gets more expensive. And so like Facebook, um, it's, it's getting more expensive every day and it's getting more restrictive and then there's more, uh, regulations coming in. Um, so, you know, those platforms you're, you're renting your lease, it's lease land, you're renting space for attention. Uh, whereas email, uh, you own the list, you own, you own the audience and, and hopefully you've got permission. Um, so you're building like a really strong connection. It's not just spamming people cause that really doesn't work too well. Um, but I think email is one of the most valuable and often overlooked, uh, marketing channels for companies. I don't think it gets the attention it deserves. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm on the same boat. And I think people have really found that out in a strong, visceral way in 2021. You know, I'm thinking like, even just yesterday, um, with all the craziness that's happening with GameStop and, um, and, and, and AMC, and then all of a sudden, this Robinhood app comes along and shuts down trading on those, you know, because of market manipulation and whatnot. And then everyone just, and then there was earlier on in the year when, when whole subreddits or communities are getting basically prevented from posting online because the people that are hosting it don't care much for what they're saying or, you know, whatever, or what they're trading or whatever it might be. And people learn really quickly. It would seem that like, it's very important to decentralize and to actually own something on the internet, because if you're just constantly relying on these platforms, one day somebody could wake up and decide that, you know, we're not, it's not kosher what you're doing anymore. And yeah. uh, And so anyway, that's, it's, a bunch of things have happened in early 2021 that have made me realize just the importance of, of that ownership. You know? Yeah. Well, and especially if you consider the idea of like um, your customer base and when something crazy happens like last year and there's massive lockdowns and COVID's going crazy and everybody's freaking out, uh, being able to communicate regularly, uh, frequently, consistently um, on brand um, with the exact message that you want to deliver to people and being able to do it immediately um, has a lot of value. And so like, you know, for us as a company of intrigue, keeping all of our clients in the know about what we were up to and the resources that we aggregated for them and trying to support them with town halls. And we weren't communicating that through, you know, ad platforms. We we're communicating all of that through email. And, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was huge for us. I, I think that you've, you've in, in a way started to answer the next question that I was going to have from you. So being that you're an entrepreneur, the founder you know, of intrigue, and that can require you to wear many hats, of course. Um, but you focus a lot of your day-to-day, day-to-day time on, on sales um, and growing the company in that respect. So can you explain the role that email marketing and email automation plays in Intrigue's success in that space? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, there, there's one side of things where people are being inundated with emails. So like, why would you want to send lots of emails? But then the other side of the thing is, well, people actually care about trying to solve their problems and achieve their goals. So um, I think that's the first kind of foundational layer that needs to just be mentioned out of the gate. So if, if we're sending a whole bunch of communication through an email platform, um, then it's got to be around those two ideas. How are we helping people solve their problems and how are we helping them achieve their goals? If that If that's the nature of the messaging, then people are going to open and they're going to engage. So having a list size like we have, maybe 15, 16,000 mailable contacts um, and a huge marketplace of entrepreneurs that we're trying to go help. Um, like right now we're in first quarter, search and rescue, right? We're trying to search and rescue landscape entrepreneurs from the, from the crappy marketing companies that do exist out there. So, um, you know, in North America, there, there's like 100,000 landscape companies. Uh, how do we know who to call and who wants to talk to us? Well, you know, using email marketing, I can send messages to a, a lot of folks about certain specific issues that we help people with. And if they click slash open, whatever, then my focus can be on these people that are engaging as opposed to this massive C. So if it really helps narrow um, a sales team's effort and, and really kind of closes the, uh, the, the time on uh, getting sales through the funnel, because now you have an opportunity to go from, instead of just calling 100,000 people at random, um, if you have a, like our, I think our landscape list size is somewhere around, I don't know, maybe a thousand or 1200 right now and, and growing. And so if we're emailing those folks and then, you know, out of them, there's 10 or 15 people that are actively engaging with all of our content on a regular basis. Well, then our sales team has an opportunity to focus in on those folks to have conversations, to see if they're ready to talk to us and see if we can help them out. Um, that's really powerful stuff. Not to mention the fact that, 
you know, I can't remember, I, I can't count how many times someone said, yeah, I've been, I've been reading your emails for three years. I've been reading your emails for four years and now I want to come talk to you. And so this like steady engagement of like, we're here to help people and it's always value add. It's always about uh, the problems that they have in solving them and helping them achieve their goals and sometimes some fun stuff. Um, it, it's, it's just kind of working in behind the scenes. And then if you, you know, you add um, automated like drip campaigns done right that are well personalized on mass, uh, but are helping people in terms of delivering value resources that they can use to help solve their problems and achieve their goals. Um, you know, I think our system in January sent somewhere in the vicinity of like 24,000 or 25,000 emails and, and no one was clicking send every time, you know, that, that kind of, machine that's going out into marketplace and helping identify these people that actually want to talk to you instead of just trying to talk to everybody. It's, it's massively valuable. And I think it's going to be one of the biggest uh, p- pieces that are going to help us uh, are with our growth goals in 2021, like legit. And, you know, there's some apprehension, I guess. Um, well, I, I see it online from folks and, and maybe they're, they're not as experienced in this field as, as somebody like yourself might be, but um, you know, what is the value of, of cold email? Um, I, I see this topic a lot, especially recently coming up, uh, cold email marketing or, or email outreach. Um, you know, what is the goal when you have a, a cold list and, and how do you slowly warm that up or how do you disqualify them too? Yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, like another foundational assumption that assuming it's ethically built and that this is like castle compliant as we are in Canada, as we have this podcast, but let's just assume that for a minute. Um, uh, cold email, it, cold email can be, it's just like cold calling. Uh, people say cold calling is dead. Cold calling doesn't work. Well, bad cold calling doesn't work. You know, good cold calling, it actually does work quite well. Um, so same with email. So be, uh, the, the thing for me with the goal with cold email is to really hyper-focus in on very specific types of situations and people that we want to help so that we, we stick out in the noise. And then when somebody um, receives one of these messages, they either say, I don't want any part of this or, Oh, that's just like me. These people get me. Um, and then there's a smorgasbord in between the people that are like, yeah, I'm not going to open that. Oh, that kind of looks fun, but I'm not going to do anything. And they just kind of park and whatever, maybe over time. Um, and so we're really just trying to filter down people that want to be spoken to. I mean, that's the, that's the biggest thing that we're trying to accomplish with cold email. And, but, and it's so funny. I had a phone call yesterday, a guy who just uh, responded to one of our campaigns that came from me and he said, call me. So I called the guy and, he, and he's up in uh, Perry sound area um, a custom furniture builder. Uh, and, uh, he said, Oh, I get like 15, 16 of these emails a day. And you know, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's just kind of garbage, whatever. And so we're having a conversation then I kind of stop. I was like, so what made you ask me to call you? If you're getting 15 to 16 of these a day and like, do you call everybody? He's like, no, he's just like, but I, you you had your phone number. You're from Ontario. You're a real company. You got, you get me. I'm dealing with those issues. So, you know, having that kind of response is massive. That's so cool um, to hear like a, a really recent case use of, of that working, you know, and yeah. I think it does dispel a lot of those myths around cold, whatever, email, phone calls, uh, what have you. So- yeah, and, and, and yet I had another call yesterday where somebody just literally phoned me and I'm on a call with Paul and they're a $25 million pool company. And same thing, like, you know, I get these emails all the time. And I'm like, why, why'd you call me? And cause you get it, it. This is exactly what I'm dealing with. You have your, like, I could see your face, your phone number, your real person. I looked you up on LinkedIn. Like you're not just some random person that I can't call. And, uh, and yeah, so I mean that both those calls happened yesterday. That's, that's all. great to hear. Um, so then let's, let's play off that a little bit. If, if I'm one of those clients, if I'm a potential client and email is one of the things that I want to capitalize on what is a, what does an email marketing plan look like? I granted it can change from industry to industry, whatever their goals are, but generally speaking, what does that look like? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest differentiation with email is uh, whether you're going after um, like an end user consumer or if you're going after like a business relationship, I think that that has a big difference in how you can go about using email. Uh, but let's just say for the sake of today that we're talking about, you know, the home improvement and construction industry. And we're, we're talking about going after consumers for the most part, uh, but it could also work from a business side. Um, at the end of the day, it all, it all comes down to that idea of like, how can we help people solve their problems and achieve their goals? And so if, if we understand the client base of, you know, who we're working with and the problems they have, and, um, when they 
there, there's kind of two things, I think. One is e- email using uh, gated content and value exchange on a website, using social platforms to have people come in and download and exchange their email address so that you can start communicating with them in their inbox um, is a first start. And then and now you're nurturing these folks to come in and buy from you when they're ready. Um, and the thing that we always talk about with email is you want to create an environment of purchase, not an environment of sales. Uh, everybody hates to be sold and loves to buy, but everybody's trying to sell shit. But really what we got to do is help people buy things. So helping people understand that if they come in and, and they download a guide on say how to hire a landscape company, well, then I know they're kind of in market. And so that I can keep feeding content to those people over time that says, you know, here's some of the things you want to watch out. Here's how you check for references. Here are top three questions you want to ask somebody when um, they're checking out and giving you an estimate. And, and I'm just feeding them information on how to make a good decision. And all the while positioning myself as an advisor and a trusted resource. You know, so, you know, email newsletters on top of that. So I'm going to say if someone comes in with gated content, you can end up um, with like a nice value drip campaign. So if someone comes in, they buy, uh, they download a guide. I'm going to keep feeding them information on how to support the content that they just downloaded. And then, you know, as much as people say newsletters aren't working very well, I mean, look at all of our clients, right? The open rates are ridiculous. Click-through rates are solid. Um, The number of just full opens that people are actually like engaging with this content is huge. So, but it's all coming back to this idea of like, how can we help you um, accomplish your goals? How can we help you solve your problems? So depending on the client list, um, making sure the content is all related to that. And then, oh yeah, helping people smile. I think that's a big one too. You know, with email, making sure you've got in uh, rich media. And I think this is something that you've done really well with like uh, the use of gifts. And it seems so simple, um, but I think it can go such a long way. There was one that went out recently with John Candy and it was something about, oh, I think it was Bavarian's. Yeah. Um, and it was like, are all doors the same or something like that? Are all window just, and door installers the same? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just yeah. John Candy. Like, no, yeah. I think that was from, uh, car, uh, what, uh, trains, planes, and automobiles, uh, or uncle buck. Okay. One of the two. One anyway. of the two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, and I, it made me chuckle. Right. And so giving somebody a brief moment to smile and you know, these days more than, more than ever, um, I think can go a long way of creating an emotional connection with like a business or a brand, um, and a customer. So there's a lot of things that can be done, uh, with email. I, yeah. I, I love that. That was a really good overview of, of you know, well, and the last thing, sorry, yeah. I was, the last thing too, is when someone buys helping them, um, onboard using email and engaging these folks of like, this is what you can expect now that you've made this purchase. This is what's going to happen next. Um, you know, and, and then helping build them into advocates over time. Um, six months later, if somebody's like installed a water conditioner, it's like, okay, you got to check something. Um, here's a maintenance thing. Okay. You just installed an, uh, a new furnace. Here's something to go look for. Have you changed your filter? Um, helping these people experience the product over time can be really helpful. And then the, the last thing is email can be set up with uh, all these different systems that help you know fulfill orders for customers and you can use email notifications i mean we all not that anybody orders anything from amazon but when when somebody gets an email saying hey your stuff's being shipped you're like sweet and then you get another email it's like it's going to arrive at 204 p.m tomorrow you're like all right this is great as a customer experience this is really nice i don't have to call anybody i'm not i'm not questioning what's going to happen next and that's all through the inbox and it's powerful stuff that's, that's very cool. And, and I have a, a follow-up that directly ties into something that you spoke about extensively there, which was, um, you know, gated content. So if, if one of my concerns as a new client is that my, my list is small and I want, to, I want it to grow, you know, I want to reach more people and I want to grow this email list because I buy into this idea that you should grow your email list and own, own those contacts and X, Y, and Z. Outside of the gated content, what are email list growth strategies that you would implement in a campaign like that. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, like um, simple ones, like a pop-up window on a website is actually quite effective. It's not like mass. It depends on the traffic for your site, but um, letting people know what they're going to get or what they're going to be a part of as they join your email list, I think is really important. Um, you can't just say like subscribe to our email list and then expect all these people to come. So uh, value exchange to letting people know what kind of access or exclusivity they're going to get um, to solve their problems and achieve their goals. I think it's really important. But when it comes to like like building your list meaningfully quickly. Um, I think contesting is actually one of the most effective strategies we've seen, um, especially on the consumer side <clears throat> and, and having a contest where, you know, you're winning um, a large amount of money towards a large purchase, but not fully free purchase, I think is what m- makes the most. So like um, if you are a landscape design company or something like that, or a landscape property maintenance company, then, you know, saying that you can win a thousand dollars off of property maintenance for the year, um, can be a really cool contest because by nature, 
you're having people that want the landscape property maintenance um, entering a contest. So they're in market. And if you can get 2000 or 3000 people that have entered this contest, then you've got a whole bunch of people that are interested in buying the service. And, and, now, and now you've got prospects and you just built your email list like crazy, as opposed to saying, Hey, win an iPad or a $500 uh, gift card to HomeSense. And then the whole world just wants it. So they got all these contest junkies, you know, subscribing in your list kind of junk. So I think that's, I mean, if I had to pick one thing and recommend it to a client on how to grow a, an email list quickly, meaningfully, uh, and significantly, then I, I would say contesting is probably the best way to do it. That's such an important distinction to make. And like what, what it is that you are giving away matters because yeah. just like you said, you know, if it's a hundred dollars Starbucks gift card, well, any yeah, who might want that? And, and they, but they might not want, you know, a new furnace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. It's just it, it, understanding that, that client and, and getting the right person into that, uh, into that email list. It's just, it's so important. Yeah. Like, like, uh, I think we're doing one for a, a door window door company and, and, you know, winning a thousand dollars towards the purchase of a door, um, that implies a lot, you know, you're not going after a marketplace that's looking to spend 600 bucks on a, a door at home Depot. Uh, they're looking at buying like a three or four thousand dollar door that's going to be like custom for their house. So just the idea of saying a thousand dollars towards a new front door, um, it means that there's a lot of people that are just like not interested in that right away because because you, you have to you still have to make a purchase like you still have to pony up some bucks. Um, and I think contesting gets a bad rap. Like I don't think people think about it. It's really simple and it works really well. And, and the engagement we see on it, not just in subscribes and um, and entries. But just like in shares and comments and likes and, and, and just letting people, like people being grateful is actually really interesting to see as an outcome. Um, so I just think it's overlooked and it works really well. Very cool. Um, let, let's speak about the alleged oversaturation of email marketing. Um, I read a tweet actually this morning. I, this wasn't intended to be part of, of my questions, but I read it this morning. I thought it was, it was apt. So the tweet was, uh, newsletters have such a bad distribution method who wants more emails I, th I think it's safe to say that you and you and i don't necessarily agree with that statement um so what are recommendations for sending emails that people actually want to read and granted you you mentioned a couple of these strategies but we can just maybe hammer in on that point a little bit yeah well i, no, I think email is oversaturated i think email newsletters a lot of them do they suck like um, I don't know if anybody's ever signed up for Moors, but man, like they just don't stop sending you promotional emails. Like it's almost daily. Uh, I, I'm unsubscribed. I'm not part of that anymore. I don't want that in my inbox every day. That's cluttered. It's noise. Um, I, I, th I think it really goes back to like, what is going to help these people solve their problem and accomplish their goals? And how can I deliver value so that when someone opens this thing, their day is better, their life is better. Um, whether it's a smile, whether it's education, um, whether it's um, introducing new resources to help them do what they do. It doesn't even have to be about me, uh, my business. It has to, and that's the whole thing. I think this is where people get really lost um, uh, out of the gate is, is and, you, and you look on our websites, it's really common. It's everything's about the company. You know, we have this sale coming out. We have this new product that we're coming out with. Um, introducing this new team member. We're opening up a new office. Like no one cares at all about us. They care about them full stop. So we got to frame everything around them. And it's like a service mindset and service servant leadership. Like if I know you well, and I know the problems you have and the goals that you have, then I'm just going to do everything I can to support you. And I think putting that lens on anytime you go to craft an email strategy is what's going to make or break it out of the gate at full stop. Stop talking about you, start talking about them. It's all about them. And, 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 and how can I, as a leader serve these folks? Um, because if I just do that over time, I'm going to build trust because I'm not trying to manipulate anybody. I'm not saying that the sale ends on Sunday and that the price goes up on Monday and all these manipulations and pending events. And it's just, um, it's not authentic and yeah. people, people want to build trust, um, and more so than ever. So just park your agenda and focus on the audience and the issues and goals that they have. And I think that just wins. Yes. Yes. You, you, you nailed it. And um, you know, you, I always say that the, the way that we communicate, um, cause I send more than just emails, right? I, I write blogs and do social posts and all that. And the way in which we commu communicate digitally um, 
should be an extension of the way that we communicate in person, right? So who the heck wants somebody showing up in their life every day, trying to hawk a new product or a new pyramid scheme to them or something like that. And nobody, nobody wants that. So why in the world would they want to see that in their inbox of all places? And something that I noticed was really cool in the email marketing world, a lot of people were sharing this during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which they call BFCM. Um, the companies, a lot, a couple, were sending out an email leading up to BFCM saying, we're going to be sending out a lot of emails over the holiday season. Would you like to opt out of these particular emails and just continue receiving your regular amount of emails? I thought, man, that's great. You have, you've acknowledged that you're going to be inundating mm-hmm. people with stuff. Yeah. You've also given them the option to come out of that. And I think that um, you know, just setting that expectation again, it just goes so far because companies aren't doing it. And so this is why people think, who the heck would want another email in their inbox? Yeah. Uh, there, there, so many of them are doing it poorly. And I mean, and look at me though, as a consumer too, and you're probably in the same boat. Like, you know, I've got five or six emails that come into my inbox on a regular basis that I actually read yeah. because they actually help me solve my problems and accomplish my goals. Like um, I don't want to lose those because they're resources. Um, and I think that's where, it, I think that's, that's the thing. It's, it's not about the sending newsletters. It's about, getting through the noise and being relevant. And that actually is hard to do for a lot of people. So then that's where it just kind of falls off. But if you can get through it and you're authentic about it and you actually help folks, then over time, you're going to make a lot of connection with people. So uh, again, to reference back to Twitter, I saw something really funny. It was like, sorry for being 39, but I'd love if uh, somebody could create a newsletter that sent me all the best TikToks for that week. (laughs) Right? Like, I'm not going to use it. No, but I find it's it cool. funny. <laughs> that's cool. That is cool. Right. So yes, if, if people want these things, if they're valuable. Right? Yeah, that's cool. So, um, Intrigue serves mostly home service businesses like we've spoken about HVAC landscaping. Is there a way that these types of business, because nothing jumps off the page as to how they can venture into the e-com world. So how can these types of business use e-com to grow their business? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's a really cool question. I think it's a huge opportunity for a lot of folks. Um, first of all, anybody that has a service maintenance plan um, in home services, there's an opportunity to buy it online. Um, a, a lot of folks were um, like HVAC, like for example, um, they rely on estimators and technicians to help upserve uh, customers into maintenance plans. And a lot of them just don't talk about it. And if they do talk about it, it's awkward and it just doesn't go right. So um, I think this is where having a good customer list an email marketing program that's talking to people about how they don't have to ever worry about not having heat or having something break or their air conditioner not working the first day it turns on when it's whatever 30 degrees on May 24th for some random reason. Um, It it can be really helpful because then you can just let it have it open up in an inbox. You can buy the service maintenance plan online, e-commerce, it's whatever, uh, $19.99 a month. And now you don't have to worry about anything. We're going to check all your stuff all the time. You never have to call us. Um, being able to have it so that someone can open up that email at say 10 o'clock at night and they can go online and buy it. And now they have a service maintenance plan. That's taking a lot of friction out of the system um, as opposed to say calling in, uh, having to phone in with a credit card number, um, maybe fill out a form that they send you. You have to print off, sign it, scan it, send it back. Like there's friction there. So I think e-commerce can be a really great opportunity for a lot of folks in the service maintenance plans, whether you're doing exterior renovations, whether you're, um, HVAC, whether you're landscape, like landscape property maintenance, there's a lot of folks that want that service. And uh, there's some easy ways to at least put an estimate down and someone can put a deposit in. Um, I think people get caught up in like, well, we have to make sure we understand every single nuance in order for someone to buy something online. Like the for property maintenance, it'd be tough sometimes if someone doesn't know, the, if we don't know the size of their yard. Um, but there can be different like packages. And then within those packages, there can be wiggle room. So it's like, hey, buy this now. And then we'll make sure it confirmed and we'll, we'll come and, and give you a better idea of what the exact price is going to be. Uh, but having someone commit to the purchase is huge. And then aggregates and supply, right, for, for landscape, mulch, um, uh, and, and anything to do with um, stuff for the garden. There's such a huge opportunity for people to be having that online. I mean, they already use it. So if you get it online, you can deliver it. Um, and especially if, you, if it's, like, very locally oriented, um, then your trucks can do the deliveries without having to even worry about shipping logistics. Now, the more you scale that, there can be some complexity. So um, but I think it's one of the things for certain 
is if you don't have anything available via e-commerce, you will not sell anything on your website. That's fair. <laughs> and and there's also uh, the ar- argument or the case to be made that it can help you through slow seasons too, right? Um, selling online and, and getting getting folks, let's say in, in a service position into a home during a time of year where it's a little bit slow. And sure. Maybe facing layoffs or something like that. And, and a way to avoid that would be, uh, hey, maybe your, your furnace or whatever needs maintenance. So, um, you know, offering offering that as well. So anyway, yeah, that's, um, um, thanks. That, that was a good insight because I don't think that it's obvious to a lot of people how you would leverage e-com in a, in a space like that. So a um, couple more questions. I know we're at 1040 hard stop. So what what metrics do you look at when determining whether or not a campaign is successful, especially because the niche that you folk that the company focuses on so much is not one, you know, that, that lends itself to sales via email. What makes an email successful? You know what, honestly, I, you know, there, there's the saying in business that revenue is sanity, profit is, or revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, cash is king. And with email, I think, um, Open rate is vanity, click-through rate is sanity, and the number of people aggregate as a whole number, not a percentage that are connected with, is king. So, you know, I've always struggled with this idea of, let's say you have a list of a thousand people and you have a 30% open rate. Is that better or worse than a list with 500 people and an open rate of 50%? Like which one is more effective? And I think more people being connected with is more effective. Even though the open rate isn't as strong, 300 people versus 250 people engaging with my stuff um, is more valuable. So I'm looking at how many people are we connecting with as opposed to the percentages of the efficiencies of delivery. Because it's, you know, B2C, B2B, at the end of the day, it's all P to P. It's all people to people. So whenever we can connect with people, um, I think that's the biggest thing. And then on a, on a, like a very sales oriented sales and marketing demand generation side, um, we send business to business uh, emails with like Calendly links. So number of appointments booked from an email campaign. Um, I think that's like really where you win. Like that's like a true key performance indicator for us. Um, and you know, the campaign that we're running right now, you know, I think we're somewhere North of 12 or 14 appointments in two weeks. Um, that's unreal value. Yeah. And, and to, to add to that, um, kind of like getting ratings or reviews for your business. Sometimes you got to ask and people have an apprehension there. So sometimes if your business doesn't lend itself to obvious statistics as to whether or not this is a successful campaign, ask the client. Or, or whomever the email is going out for, if these are successful. Because I, countless times we hear after the fact that, hey, you know that email that you guys sent out back in October? Um, we, had, we had three people come in and buy, you know, X, Y, and Z. Oh, and, right, cool. Uh, you know, and, and, and so sometimes it just requires that, that, that ask and, and making sure that it's everything that you're doing is copacetic with, with the, the business's goals, whatever yeah. those may be. So, um, Really cool insight. Well, and we, and we hear about it a lot too, right? Every once in a while, um, we have clients that'll do like team uh, highlights. They'll like showcase a person inside their organization. And then that person, the feedback that comes of, oh, I had no idea about that. And you, you hear all this buzz and you're like, oh, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, there are tons of people opening and reading these things. It's not just click-through rates and open rates. It's people being connected with. And I, I just think that goes a long way. And it's just, I mean, that the highlighting people, whether or not you do that or not, that doesn't matter. But it does showcase the fact that people actually do care and read these things when they're done properly. Very cool. Last, last question before I let you uh, give any last comments. I think we already answered this, but um, this meme pops up regularly. Is email marketing dead? It is, it is stronger than ever when done properly. It's almost great that there's so many people doing emails so poorly um, because then when you go do it right, it just crushes. So, you know, I really don't want too many competitors to hear this podcast because they might start catching on that email can be a really great tool that they can use if they just do it right. The one thing though I got to say is like, if everybody could start doing email right, then it would be a lot 
uh, more fun as an environment. Um, the thing is, what I think it, it, a lot of people don't is because it's actually hard to understand your customers so well that you can engage with them every time you send an email. And because a lot of people, because it's hard, a lot of people don't do it. I think it kind of goes back to Seth Godin's like the dip. You know, it's, you might get a little bit of an understanding of folks as you start. And then uh, as you start to send it, you're getting too busy. And then all of a sudden the engagement rates go down. You're not necessarily focused on trying to serve people as much. Um, but if you lean through that and come out the other side, uh, there's a lot less people over there. Um, and that's a fun place to be. So I, yeah, email is alive and well, as far as I'm concerned. It's one of the main drivers of our growth. And we've been on Canada's fastest growing companies list four years in a row. I'm going to take that sound bite and I'm going to make it my ringtone. <laughs> it's the truth. Because that's, that's, that's perfect. And I, I honestly couldn't think of a better sentence to end this podcast on. So unless you have anything to say, we've, we've hit the pinnacle, you know? No, that's <laughs> great, man. I'm, I'm stoked to have to be on the show with yeah. you, man. I'm, I'm just really happy you're doing this. This is just a lot of fun. Wicked. Well, uh, thank you too. And um, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Rob. All right. Rock on, see Andrew.